All right, what's up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is the Fight of Faith, and I got a friend of mine named Louis Connie Navarro. Uh, we're here uh, to do an episode. We're here to uh, learn about him and talk about your story, bro. So thanks for coming on. Make sure Appreciate it. Appreciate yep. it, boss. Let me get closer to this thing. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks and for having me, man. Of course. And um, so uh, obviously we got Drew here in the background creeping, make, keep making sure we keep our facts straight. Check. And uh, I guess you guys are the two closest dudes that that train, huh? Y'all are probably what really good friends, brothers. Yeah, you can tell them. Sure. You can tell. You can say you don't like them. You no, can. no. Uh, Drew actually, uh, <laughs> I int introduced to Drew by Dejan, one of my close buddies. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and ever since that day, he's kind of been like a mentor to me. Um, he definitely has a big brother kind of advice, um, especially now. You know, now that I'm kind of. Getting to that 25, 26 year old age, um, some of my friends don't give me, you know, the best advice mm. as some of your friends would, you know, would give you. So I can, you know, definitely call him up and be like, hey, this is what's going on. And he's going to give me, you know, real advice that, you know, nice. comes from the heart. And it's not like, oh, I don't, it's not not real. Just, yeah, yeah. you know, for him to tell me, like, what I want to hear. It's, it's real stuff, whether I like it or not. So, you gotta respect right. people like that. You know what I'm saying? We we need some real friends in our yeah. life for sure. We need some real friends in your life. <laughs> some real friends, guys. Right. And um, so let's start from day one, man. Like, what's your story? Where are you even from? How'd you end up in Vegas? Okay. So basically, I'm originally from. Uh, I grew up in uh, Virginia, like South Riding, Fairfax, Loudoun County area. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like right outside the D.C. area. Um, in Virginia. Okay. Um, kind of growing up. And just normal child. I played football, basketball, um, all the way up to kind of high school um, to senior year. Um, I got into I was just you know a normal kid, just suburb kind of dude. Um, I would get into a couple scuffles here and there, just like normal kids. But I never really thought myself, you know, I never really thought I would get into fighting. Mm. Um, then when I graduated, I mean, I I did kind of get into some scuffles kind of in high school. Right. That, you know, just. It I was happens. being, yeah, just just playing around. It's not like I wasn't like no Jorge Masvidal where I was like <laughs> fighting in backyards, but I was just doing it for fun, you know, at, you know, parties and or, or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, I ended up moving to California, kind of uh, when I was nineteen, just to get away from Virginia, um, just to get away from the lifestyle. Um, I was just getting, I was just getting in a lot of petty trouble. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to like branch out, experience so. I ended up moving out to California. I settled down in like Orange County, nice. um, right outside of LA. Um, and how long were you out there? I like was out there for about a year and a half. Oh wow! So, so not that long. Okay. Yeah, so I was out there. Um, you started fighting out there. So I got started. I, yeah, kind of. So, <laughs> so a lot of things happened. A lot of things happened okay. between you know me starting to get into the gym. You know, I went out there. Uh, Maybe, yeah, 19, 19 okay. and a half, 20, really like, oh, I'm in California. I'm going right. to go to the dispensary. I'm going to go wild. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to find myself just like any, you know, 18, 19 year old, uh, just fresh out of high school, is trying to do. Um, I was just trying to find myself. I wasn't hanging around with the right type of people. I wasn't yep. doing the right things that I should have been doing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and it's just kind of. Um, it just happened to lead me on to one day that I walked into uh, Brazilian Top Team, which was now called Total MMA. Um, mm. And I wasn't taking it serious or anything. I was just like, oh, I want to kind of just see what I can do. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I went to a class and I did some jiu-jitsu. Um, and I just fell in love with jiu-jitsu from there. Um, I started nice. doing kickboxing. And I, you know, just kind of ran from there uh -huh. um i had did nice. it before in virginia but i wasn't tapped in all the way you know i right. would go here and there um i actually bought a membership for like a year and then like one time right. oh you know what I'm saying? i know how that like, is you know what i'm saying just yeah. I, I wasn't tapped in all the way and um i was faking the funk i was you know just call it. i would be like oh yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go but i don't go so uh -huh. when i went to california um i was taking it you know I would say 35% serious, um, but yeah. I was still in the street. I was still kind of, you know, trying to do what I had to do to get my little money and be seen like, oh, 
Hmm. I'm the Instagram, you know, back then everything was like the Instagram just had started. So like, oh, I'm in L.A. Like I want to live this type of lifestyle and whatever. Wow. Um, I ended up, you know, getting in some trouble okay. when I went back home. Um, they involved, uh, you know, one of, uh, I would say, an acquaintance. Um, and uh, there was a gun discharged. And, uh, you know, he got hit. And um, wow. it was in my house, obviously, with my weapon. But, um, you know, things happened, and I had to, you know, kind of be a man and deal with the situation. Right. And what happened after that, and I ended up doing about two and a half years wow. in jail. So that kind of transitioned me into, like, oh, wow. Like, all right, what are we going to do, Right. you know, from here? Because um, that's pretty young, huh, to deal with that. What, yeah. How old were you when that happened? I was 20. Dang, dude. I see that you have to grow up quick, man. When you do. when that kind of stuff happens, it's like um, it's like what's where, where where did you go from there after that happened? So I ended up um, actually, so it's kind of a crazy story. So I ended up doing all the jail time, and that's really when I got into, you know, the fighting. You know what I'm okay. saying? Um, after the jail time. Before, like oh, in, oh. during the whole me and incarcerated because I was angry. You know what I'm saying? I mm. was like. I didn't really know how to express my student before I went to jail, you know, because mm. it was just, you know, dabbling in substances and, you know, I'm saying living. I didn't know how to express my emotions, so I would express it through, you know, smoking or, mm. you know, going out and drinking and partying and doing stuff like that. So especially when I went to jail and I was cut off from, you know, substances and stuff like mm. that, I just had a whole, a lot of belt, you know, been built up anger, right. just tension, and um, I actually started a fight club in huh. the county that I was in. So, <laughs> That's funny. You know, I mean, a lot of dudes would just sit there and just, we're, you know, we're with each other 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's mm. a lot of tension that builds up. Huh. So, you know, there's enough pushing and pushing and scrapping <laughs> that you can only do in basketball when you're out there playing. Right. So, and they let you do that? Uh, no. The what? The fight, the no, fight club. No, no, no. <laughs> That's for surely frowned upon. Oh, okay. So, but, but what we would do is, um, you know, I've, if we would have a beef or just, playing around we would wrap our we'd wrap our uh, hands up in towels mm. get a little orange squeeze on the orange and then just go in there put the towel over the thing go in there the dudes would like sit up on the top bunk wow. I'd sit there in the middle and just be the referee like, go you know what i'm saying Dang. people would just swing it out if you had a beef you had a beef if you didn't we would just go in there and do it for fun and that's kind of just how we like let our anger out it was just like a wow you know kind of a modern day fight club where people weren't really getting too hurt, but it was kind of release. And that mm. with the Spike TV, we'd sit there Friday nights and all watch the Bellator fights. Right. You know what I'm saying? All the free UFC fights. And that's kind of where I was like, like the whole discipline of me working out and like when you get that, get that thing, whatever out of you, you know, whatever yeah. you choose to do with your exercise, whether it's cardio, kickboxing, jujitsu, yoga that feeling that you feel afterwards that's just uh that's just what i like you know what i'm saying that's yeah what, that's what calms me down so i realized that i was like hey mma or even like this type of exercise helps me a lot it, i'm not as angry anymore hmm. so when i got out i was just kind of like all right what am i gonna do couldn't really get a job now because i was a I was two felonies yeah with a kind of a juvenile record so it's like right i couldn't really get a lot of good jobs um so my mom was just kind of set me down and was like, all right, what's your plan? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. And um, I still didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I was like, and you were close with your mom and dad? Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. I'm close with my mom. It was, you know, my, my, I love my mom. I'm for sure the mama's <laughs> boy, for sure. And, and um, is yes. that, yeah. <laughs> I love my mom. Fact check, Jamie. I love my mama. <laughs> Amen, dude. So, so is that uh, your nationality, Brazilian? Yeah, yeah, I'm Brazilian and Bolivian. And, uh, nice. Yeah, obviously Afro-Latino. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so um, from there, mom sits you down. Hey, you got to get it together. You got to do something. How do you end up in Las Vegas? Okay, so after I get out, I actually wasn't into fighting. I got out 250 pounds. You Dang, know what I'm yeah, that's where I was, I'm at, bro. I, yeah, I was, you know, but and I got I, out. And I lost weight to get to 250, bro. Mm -hmm. That's so heavy. I got out, okay. and uh, <laughs> my brother Rob was kind of like, hey, look, you need to get in the gym. He actually, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, he was big. He was bigger at the time, but he wasn't as big as me. So okay. I was like, bro, I got to borrow some clothes. Like, hey, like, what are you going to do? And I was like, oh, I'm going to lose the weight, man. I just got to, you know, let's get back into the gym. And I was lifting heavy. 
So <laughs> I was a big boy. And then, um, man, just one day, I just walked into the UFC gym. Wow. Said, hey, let, me, let, me, let me just see what I got. You know, throw some gloves on. And I just got fucked up. Mm -hmm. I got fucked up by a dude that was like 145. Hefe, actually. So uh, You never forget those guys. No, you never do. He, he put his hands on me. And <laughs> it's actually funny because um, the type of person I am, I was like, fuck, dude. I'm going to come back here. And, and show him. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. like, it's not even show him. I was just like, I'm just going to come back here and put the work in. And as I was walking out, man, I just... I was like, let me just ask the manager, like, hey, are they hiring? You know what I'm saying? I had oh, some, wow. I had some Thai experience, so I'm not like, you know, I've ran, you know, some kickboxing classes back when I was working at Total. I'm not like a, a dummy. And the good thing about anything nowadays is YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You could literally YouTube some combinations, right? Work on them yourself, bag work, and then if you're a good teacher, you know what I'm saying? You could just teach them. Nice. And he was like, yeah, dude, actually, we're looking for a kickboxing instructor. Nice. So I kind of just from there went to working to tie and then really just training mm -hmm. um and then uh yeah so i went from the ufc gym and i saved a couple uh, i saved some money and i was like hey mom i'm gonna try to get back to the west coast just because mm -hmm. virginia wasn't working out for me the group of friends all they were mm -hmm. doing was going out every night getting drunk and they and they had jobs so like they had jobs mm -hmm. so they could get drunk every you know what i'm saying go out mm -hmm. every weekend and then make it to work at 6 30 in the morning mm -hmm. yeah you know what i'm saying get their money, and then do the same thing every night. Again, I was making maybe like $20 a class. Okay. You know, I was teaching two classes a day maybe. So it's like I wasn't making mm. enough to eat, you know what I'm saying, yeah. or like to pay my own like car insurance. So I was like, I'm going to save enough money. So I'm going to get back to the West Coast, um, and I'm just kind of going to find a room for rent, and I'll try to find the same job at the UFC and then just nice. go from there, okay. work from there. So I ended up doing that, and I actually ended up getting hurt. Um which didn't put me to fighting. I okay. ended up getting sick in California, super sick. I ended up like with a stomach flu that t dropped me from 240 to 220. So like I lost 20. F I was sick for like a week. So that actually really helped me <laughs> getting back down the weight. Huh. Um, all this time I was working at the UFC gym, and yeah, one night I just I was like, man, I'm tired of this shit. I was watching. I was actually just watching some Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. and he was like, man, just I was. If you want to do something, just do it. And it was kind of like a sign because I was like, I'm tired of working this UFC job. I'm tired of waiting in traffic two hours to go teach one class. Right. And driving another 45 minutes to go train. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm just going to quit and do this thing full time. Uh -huh. And um, I was training at Classic at the time. So when I quit, I didn't really think ahead because... <laughs> None of us do. Yeah, I, I, I I'm guilty. Sure, I'm I guilty for sure. Didn't. Yeah, and uh, living in California is expensive, so I had quit my job, and I was like, "Oh, I'm in train full time, and uh, where am I? How am I going to pay my rent?" Right. So, <laughs> um, and then at this time, I was, you know, happened to be dealing with, um, you know, the uh, the mother of my kid. So, uh -huh. you know, we were still going back back and forth dating, and. Uh, uh, Happened to get her pregnant, so that's how my firstborn king is here. So uh, we decided to move out to Vegas, and that's how we that's how I came to come about Vegas. Nice, everything's cheaper out here, you know. Right, and your money goes a l way longer than it would in in the L.A. <laughs> especially Orange County For sure. area. Yeah, you don't have to sit in traffic. You don't have to worry about any of that, and um, I could just really just focus on um, being the best me, being the best fighter, and then you know learning to become a father, because that's one of my top priorities for sure man you know first of all hats off to you you know for stepping up to the plate at a young age mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying is i know a lot of people have different uh you know coming ups and in, in their early lives but um i can only imagine you know how how rough it could have been to for that that kind of stuff happened to you at 20 and then you're scrambling to get a life together for your kid and uh and you end up in las vegas i mean but I see you on social media. You love your kid, and I see you uh, working hard with like my guy Drew here. So I just think when you are just doing what you're supposed to, and you're being all these things, it's inevitable like to be blessed in return for that. Like when you're putting all this good work in, you're you're you're, you're nice to these people. You're a good father. Like so, that's just like inevitable for success for you and for like good vibes going your way you know like and i just yeah. so hats off to you for that i appreciate you know? it and I, yeah we could you know i'm there's definitely things that i'm still learning so like mm -hmm. people right now that may see this later on and 
now it's like there's definitely things that I've been working on not like for sure I'm like I said earlier I'm working my biggest step is learning how to be a father you know what I'm saying right because you know just as coming out a lot of people you know I I don't have the same open doors that a lot of other people do you know what I'm saying so um I've had to sink in real deep into what I have to do in the because of my scenario. Mm-hmm. So I w- I'm wasn't available to, uh, you know what I'm saying, be there for my son. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and even to support, you know, the mother of my son. So that's why I kind of grind so hard now in the gym with all the gym sessions because at the mm-hmm. end of the day, you know what I'm saying, that's my that's my end goal is that's your motivation. You know, that that's exactly for surely my motivation. So. Um, that's really why I get up in the morning. I, didn't, I think, you know, when, once you have that, um, it's just hard for a lot of men to show that. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah, for me being talk young, about it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm still very prideful. So, you know, you get you tend to get into altercations with wh- with whoever your loved one or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and I'm just learning how to, like, kind of put my pride down and, and, and be the mature person um, with every situation and aspect that I have to deal with. I forget how young you are. Yeah. You don't look like it. How old are you again? I'm about to be 26. Dang, man. He's even younger than me, Drew. I mean, I'm usually the young guy in the room. Yeah. I'm, you know, (laughs) (laughs) that's it. That's his one line of this whole show. Facts, you know, all right, back to you, Justin. No, it's like, no, no, that's cool, man. Cause you, you carry yourself in a mature way. So obviously, you know, people won't even guess that you're that young, but, you know what I see, though, is that like a lot of young people nowadays um, don't carry themselves that way. So I think that's why your story is going to be very impactful for everyone watching, because um, there's a like, say, for example, there's a lot of people, especially young people nowadays that tried to live the life that you did. Like, say, when you went through some things in Cali, but they're chasing it, though. It wasn't their natural environment. It, yeah. You know, like it, they weren't even born into it. There's an image that they're trying to portray. What yeah. do you say to people like that? Um, so stop I, it being was a fake. Little, it's <laughs> not even that. It's not stop being fake because, okay. um, you know, like anyone that really knows me knows that like my, I mean, my family wasn't, it, we weren't, you know, too, too down bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we weren't, we were just middle class. I just, I just happened to just get myself into trouble. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom, you know, my mom just ha- was always at work. My dad, you know, they're hard workers. So I was just always just in the street, just hanging out with people that I shouldn't have hang out with. You know, some of them, you know, they're good people, but we just, we were just young and dumb. Uh-huh. Um, just trying to be around a group that supports you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but I tell the people now, it's just like, be yourself. That's it. Find a group of people that, are is are similar to you you don't want like sharks don't hang out with you know seals or anything like that Mm -hmm. you know so just find some you know group of people that you hang out with that you would that you would bring home to your family you know what i'm saying you're not going to bring someone you know you're not going to bring dreamy or jessica home to your family your mom's going to look at you like well you ain't never seen you hang out with these other people before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just be genuine to yourself because at the end of the day, like, you have to look yourself in the mirror. And you got to be like, oh, when you brush your teeth in the morning, you're going to be like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, who, yeah. who am I going to be? And that's kind of the difficulty with my generation and especially kind of I feel like the generation now, um, the social media part plays a big deal. And like, mm-hmm. oh, I got to uphold this image. I got to I gotta yeah. do this. I got to do that. Um, and just... It doesn't, like, what if internet got turned off? You guys, you know, some of you guys would be lost in the sauce. So yeah. just learn how to be real. Read a book once in a while and uh, just turn the turn the phone off because I feel if you give yourself more personal time to develop and, and really um, cherish the relationships around you and um, really learn to forgive other people, I think you will we, start being better humans and then you'll start to find yourself and, we can communicate better with each other. I'm yeah. starting to sound kind of like a hippie, but you know, but that's sounds like a really sounds like a pastor, bro. Nah, yeah. nah, nah. <laughs> no, but it's just yeah, you know preach it, Pastor that's Louis. Like, that's that's that's, that's kind of what I what I feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Pastor Louis has a ring to it, bro. That sounds I good, like don't it. it, Drew? Just and be that, real. Just be you know, or or Bishop. Would you like? What do you like better, Bishop or Pastor? I like Bishop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which one's higher? No. Bishop. <laughs> they make yeah. more money. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't want to be. I don't want to be those. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be the. 
I don't no. want to pull up in like the Ferrari to the sermon, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I'll yeah. Just keep my little charger. <laughs> There's a negative connotation with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Hey, but um, no, that's so that's that's legit. That's cool. But how how'd you end up champ champ, bro? I see you with two belts. I see you from uh, from tough enough. From fast forwarding from this kid that we're talking about is all good, and, and that's your origin and everything. But man, like, it's a local. It's a success. It's a honestly, it's just um knowing like just annoying people you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. annoying coaches annoying the promoter mm -hmm. being in the gym all the time hey hey i want this shot i want this shot because once i kind of dived into it full time and i was at the gym all the time and they seen my face mm -hmm. and it's just like anything that you're going to do in life if you want to be a rapper you're going to take it serious you're going to hand people your mixtapes you're going to fucking you know excuse me no, you're, gonna, you're, you're gonna go the you know you're gonna go the nine miles so i was in the gym all the time i've always wanted to spar and it just happened to be that even before uh I, the tough enough championships i would call my boy out i you know i'd go cam i did everything myself i would you know mm. make my own camo i'd hit the promoters up i was like hey man i'm ready to fight i'll drive out wow. and then I, I would hit my boy christian up uh which kind of threw me into it and was one of my training partners at Classic and he would come corner me. We'd just go out there. Wow. You know, we he would hold some mitts for me. I'd go out there and do the thing and then mm. and, you know, I'd go back home. Um, but once I got to uh, Vegas, I got put in the scene. Um, I was training at Extreme and I was training at 10th Planet um, and I was just hitting Brian up like, hey man, I wanna fight, I wanna fight, I wanna fight. And just happened to be the first, the first one. It was happening to be 11 day notice. Hmm. Dude had dropped out. Um, my my manager, Roman, just hit me up like, hey, do you wanna fight? And I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, why not? I just wanna do it for the experience. I don't really care about the win, you know, the losses. I just wanna go out there for the experience because, you know, it's amateur, it doesn't really count. No one's gonna look at your amateur record. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I went out there just for the fun. Um, and, yeah, so the dude I was supposed to fight that originally dropped out, hmm. I filled in. The dude didn't want to fight me. So they ended up finding a replacement. The dude, uh, shouts out to him for filling in, filled in. So I went in there, got the job done. So it's kind of just everything just happens. Okay. I feel like I'm a firm believer of, like, you put your work in, it's going to happen eventually. You know what I'm saying? If you stay consistent, it's going to happen. might not happen today. I know I had tomorrow, but like with persistency, you're gonna get results. Yeah. So that happened. I went back to the gym the next day. It's just like I'm not I'm not content with this. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew that this was gonna That's happen. Good. You know what I'm saying? If you put the if you just put the work in, results are gonna happen. So right. um, yeah, I went back to the gym the next day and was planning for the next because, like I said, like I'm trying to I'm trying to go up the ladder mm -hmm. and. This is the only way that I know that I can be financially stable later on in life and mm -hmm. then still keep my sanity with my discipline, mm. feeling good, being healthy and living the lifestyle that I want to live. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and that first fight you talked about, that was at uh, middleweight at 185? Or? That was at 170. 170, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I had the, I was at 185. I was supposed to be at 185 and then okay. they dropped it down to 170. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and then the second fight was probably like three months later. Mm -hmm. uh at 185 gotcha. um, just again bugging the promoter like hey i just want to fight let's get a fight i want to fight um the first one was at 170 yeah first one was at 170 okay um and it just happened to be like again like just right timing because the first one was pack the mat which is one of the biggest amateur events dude i was there yeah i was at pack the mac yeah yeah so oh, it thanks. was you know it was just i'm a firm believer like everything's gonna happen and you guys when things happen you gotta take it and then just run with it so it was wow. a good crowd so for my for my third thomas and mac by the way is a big big venue by unlv in, in las vegas so um you know i was like hey like i can't i can't give this opportunity up there'd be a hundred people especially you know back from where i'm from that hmm. that, that fight it's a big you know arena yeah that would take this opportunity to heartbeat so i ended up taking it and um i'm a gamer so i just like to i just like to compete mm. doesn't matter if we're playing uno you know, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I don't like losing you know what I'm saying? I was, <laughs> in anything yeah, okay yeah i mean i don't take it as a loss i take it as like a losing but uh, <laughs> like as, as a lesson that i'm learning but oh i don't like losing. yeah all right so all right the first one that thomas at mac um and then I did the, my second one was uh, the charity event for uh, Extreme Couture, Randy. Okay. 
Um, so it was a whole bunch of extreme fighters. And since I happened to be, you know, uh, the champ, they asked me if I wanted to fight at 185. And I was like, hey, I'm cool with it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I fought someone that was already seasoned, that was already coming back. So, um, yeah, I went in there, kind of just did what I had to do. Um, I wasn't, I was kind of banged up before the fight. I had a broken nose. And um, I've been dealing with this hernia. I had a hernia the whole time I've been training with. That's crazy. Because yeah, after you uh, after yeah. you won, yeah. then you took care of it. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. It's because it, I didn't want to, like, I was already dealing with it. I was already training full clip. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just, I didn't want to, like, take a break, do six weeks, and then get back into shape. I was already in shape. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm going to do it at the end of the year. You know, I'll take that another year off. You know what I'm saying? Just like mm -hmm. a season. Just like, just like you know, football players would do. They're going to go through injury or whatever. Right. Um, they're going to thug it out and then just get it taken care of at the end of the season. Nice. But that was definitely, like, how I feel now and how I was with that hernia was way different. So right. I was fighting with the hernia. Uh, I was fighting with a broken nose. Um, and I kind of just endured through it. I took the dude down. Mm -hmm. Took his back. I had been working a lot of jujitsu, so I took his took the dude's back and I choked him out in the first round. Man, and then um, yeah, and I went there. But I've I, I've been competing even in the off season. I've been, I've been doing jujitsu tournaments. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been I've been putting in the work. So that's just kind of one thing that leads from putting in the work. You know what I'm saying? You get results, and when you get an a, 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 an event or like a a place like that for you to to show your talents, like. Mm -hmm. You're either gonna do it or you're not, and that's man. what makes stars for real. Well, congrats on everything, man. What's what's the end result? What's the end goal for all of this, man? What? So this year, I definitely got some things planned. Um, we're definitely gonna go pro in April. Um, just trying nice. to uh, just find the right way to make it so I can go back to the East Coast. Okay. So I can, you know, what I'm saying, go back and fight in my hometown or at least like nearby. Mm -hmm. um, but if not, if that's not available, I'll fight out here. I, I just, I'm just really in the fight. I want to get back. You know, I'm still kind of getting back into into shape from my surgery. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I've been I've been training. So I think by summer, you know, by the nice. end of the summer, we'll be two and zero, uh, two and zero as a pro. Nice. Um, you know what I'm saying? And then okay. leading up to this year, um, you know, trying to get on this contender series or something like that. Right. So I can. I got just got to manifest it. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm with the right camp now, you know, I'm with the right coaches, Coach Casey, um, Roman, all those dudes at Extreme, all the dudes at 10th Planet, you know, I have a really good team, I have really good training partners, um, it's just staying, about, it's just being patient, you know what I'm saying, it's yeah. being patient, putting in the work, you know what I'm saying, helping your teammates with their camps, um, you know, putting in the work when you got your camps, um, staying consistent. And, and all this thing is like 90%, 90% mental for sure. Nice. So if you can, the workouts are easy, but if you can go home, put all the, you know, the bullshit that you deal with aside, deal with what you have to deal with with your home life, and then still have the grit to get back to it the next morning with the same goal that you have in mind, like, hey, I need to get to that stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything starts with a dream. I've, I've dreamt this, you know that I would be, you know, at one of the biggest stages with with the with the factors that were kind of around me. Mm -hmm. um, and I just got to, like, I just got to go with it. I'm just kind of just, just going with it. Amen, dude. That's, that's an inspiration to everybody listening. Hopefully you guys can kind of glean and understand where uh, he's coming from. And uh, anything is possible if you guys just have the faith and you just put the work in and uh, nothing's going to fall out of the sky. Um, but, but... Uh, there's a scripture where God says that uh, he will bless whatever you put your hands to so it can prosper. So, But if a lot of people trying to be blessed without putting their hands to anything, without putting any work in. Mm -hmm. So I see you. You're working hard, like especially you guys, uh, you and Drew, like people like you guys. It's like I said before, it's like inevitable, you know, the success that you dream of. So, um, so props to you like for yeah. real so um i I'm, I'm happy you came on is there any last words or any uh anything you want to share with anyone that may be watching and probably in a similar upbringing or a similar situation coming up i don't think they they can follow their dreams um, yeah man um i just want to tell you know anyone that might be watching this 
um, that you can't you don't let you know past things in your life define you you know what i'm saying no. um you always got a chance to be better there's always you know it doesn't matter if it's been raining for 14 days the sun's gonna come out eventually so you know what i'm saying um you just got to keep going um m the best thing that kind of worked for me is just um just write the things down things that you want to do down and post them up on the wall and just look at it you know what i'm saying every day um and then just keep good relationships around you, um, keep good people around you, um, keep positive people around you. Um, you know, you put a fruit by something. If you put fruit that's spoiled by another by a good fruit, it's gonna spoil that good fruit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, that's just been working at the farmers market. Yeah, know. we yeah we, have, we and we represent the fruit from uh, Las Vegas farmers market, Rod's produce market. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly. I, I, hey. I was. I was going. I was going for there too. So yeah. What it, you it got? Goes, what you got, bro? It goes kind of everything that goes what I go into. So like, um, I go off the every every my teammate kind of goes off the uh, consistency. If you're consistent, consistent over time, you're gonna get those results. Mm -hmm. Me, I just put it to if you got the hustle. If you're putting in the the hustle, putting in the time, you're putting in the grit. You're gonna get that success. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um, I started a clothing line and kind of just something that represents me, something that's my style um, for people, you know, that just like luxury wear, that like luxury, just stuff that go to the gym, it's going to look good with. I started Hustle time, or hustle Times Muscle Equals Success. Um, nice. You link to my Instagram. You guys could get a hoodie, get a T-shirt. I'm just going to sell merch just, you know, through my fights and, you know, nice. when I have some time to – um, you know, design some things, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Everything, everyone should have their little side hustle, whether it's, you know, selling stuff on eBay or, mm -hmm. you know, detailing cars, you know, you can, you got to be your own entrepreneur these days. Um, and yeah, you got to learn how to be your own businessman. So that's kind of, uh, the best motivation I can give to you, man. Just write the things, write the things down, hang around positive people. Um, and yeah, man, if, if you guys have any questions, I'm, I talk back. My uh, Instagram's underscore blackzillion, mm -hmm. you know, on IG. And, yeah, shoot me a message. And, uh, yeah, man, thanks for having me. For yeah, sure. thank you for sharing your story, bro. I I'm sure everybody is going to really enjoy this episode. For you to open up and share your story, I know uh, everyone's watching is going to be inspired and motivated. So I appreciate you, man. Um, you know, and so before we just close, I just can I just pray? Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, pray let's, for you. let's get a prayer. In yeah, so uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, Louis. Thank you for uh, his life and for his his child, for his career, for everything, Father God, that you bless his hands uh, to prosper, whatever he put his hands to. I just bless uh, a, a, a blessing of favor over him that, um, that in this next chapter of his life with his clothing line, with going pro, with everything, I just pray that you have your hand upon him for protection, for favor, and you just let him shine, Father God, to to shine and, and come into his timing. And uh, I just thank you, God, that um, that we all support one another, that uh, we give you the glory and we thank you for the air that we breathe and for the opportunity to do what we love and to give you glory in it. And we just uh, pray for traveling mercies and your protection over him in and outside the ring to continue to have success. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen Love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. This was a great episode. Adam on Instagram. Follow him. Stay tuned for a lot of things to come. And keep fighting the good fight of Stay faith. Stay motivated, guys. God bless.